This is not just a drilling a, a, a well and putting a, a tank on a pump, electrical pump on there. Am I saying that correctly? Yes. And then where he's putting also a hand pump. So off grid, on grid, no power, it's on. Yep, we're going to have a submersible pump, one horsepower, 25 gallon per minute, Franklin Electric pump. And we're going to also rig up a Simmons pitcher pump on top where she will have the option to isolate if the power is off and be able to hopefully pull water with the hand pump. And granted, hand pumps will only work with the water level shallower than 25 feet. So it all depends on where you are, what your water level is in the ground, it has to do with a hand pump, um, just like a shallow well jet pump. So three main pumps on the market, you can look into that information depending on what you're trying to do with their volume output and where it is that you're constructing your well and water levels there's a whole lot of information when it comes to that and that's why talking to a professional a Absolutely. pump installer and well installer they're going to guide you in the direction you need so what's happening now so now that we, we flushed our hole, so all the rest of all that sand settled out from the borehole that we cut. Now we're going to pull our rods out, trip the tools, which pull rods, and then we will put the screen in and push it down to where we want it. And what you saw Connor putting together a little while ago on the end of that two inch pipe is a four by two tri seal. That black object on the left there. So we'll have 40 foot of 10 slot screens, and we'll have a, a 15 foot section of riser to get my seal where I want. This will be inside of the four inch down towards the bottom, and all your measurements have to be right because if they're not, and your bore hole is deeper than what you think or you don't have enough me your measurements are wrong when you set and this comes out of the bottom of that four inch the well is ruined at that point and it'd be very hard to get back onto it to connect back to it to pull it back up into the four inch so i like to have at least five foot inside of the bottom of the four inch so on this particular one we're shooting for the seal to be set at 55 feet. We're 110 foot deep right now. So our screens will be from 70 to 110, and then from 70 up to 55 feet to the seal. So this is a 15 foot piece there. Uh, and that's because the formation. Yep, these are number 10 screens, so 10 thousandths of an inch slots. They make 20, number, uh, 20 slot screens. Those are a little too big, especially if you're not filter or gravel packing the well yourself. If we drilled this down, the five and seven eighths diameter bit, if we drilled all the way down to where we are now at 110 feet, we could have drilled down, pulled out and set screens and casing four inch diameter if we wanted all the way to the bottom and then poured filter sand gravel pack around down the well and we'll settle around these screens okay and build a well like that which is a quicker procedure we got a big chopper coming two of them the USA Amen. so drilling a hole just like a shallow well 50 foot deep in the sand pull out you just drop the screen and the casing all together and then you pour filter sand around it we could have done that here the problem is we would have gotten that the two aquifers are so close here that we would have got the water from the upper aquifer mixing with the water from the, the deeper aquifer so the limestone and sandstone so that's why we set four inch and grouted it in place 
uh, last night, yesterday, and we're drilling out and we're shooting screens, is method we call it in the field, shooting screens out of the bottom of the casing into our formation and let it naturally gravel pack. Now, there's all kinds of different ways to build wells and as you'll see through this journey here, we went over a, a lot of different procedures just to install this one little well. And it's only 110 feet. So I know some of the guys out there have it a whole lot worse than me, you know, three, five, six, 800 foot wells just to get water. So over here, we're, we're pretty lucky to be usually within 300 feet, depending on where you are and where we're located right now today, evidently 110 feet for the, the deeper of the two aquifers. So we have it pretty good as far as depth wise. So we have other complications to deal with, but that's drilling. length of screen that I showed you down with these drill rods and we leave them sitting on top of that screen and that seal as we start to develop the well with the air lift procedure like we tried testing the well earlier with so we leave them on there so the screen doesn't come shooting back up the hole if we sent you know a large volume of air down there and we don't want the screens to blow and lift so we'll use that to hold them down into place as we develop it as we develop it the natural sand will cave, cave in and set around our screens which is what we want then they'll be locked in place and that'll be the final stage of building the well and you'll the water and everything is right will be flowing out it will get crystal clear i mean you'll be able to pretty much drink it right out of the ground I do anyways, but most people, we, you know, you want to chlorinate. process slowly this is critical to not blank your screens out and suck too much fine sand into the screens at once but we start it real slow we want the sand starts falling in around the screens and then we'll give it more air and start developing it harder after a short time That is groundwater, and it will be dirty. I mean, all our drilling fluids, all the... You see, there's no sand in it. Now you see, when I tested it earlier, open-ended with no screens, you see 
it filled this pan up with sand in a matter of a minute. So you see now already that our screens are doing the job. It's exactly what we want. So this is a 44 gallon bladder tank and depending on the size of the pump discharge is how you size your bladder tank. So this works hand in hand with the pressure switch. So as you use water, it is pressurized in here with the, there's an air bladder inside of here and air compresses, water does not. So the air bag will bladder will compress once it fills the setting on the pressure switch, whatever pressure we set it for, it will shut the power off to the pump and you start using water out of a hose. At first it's coming from this tank until it drains down to the pressure that we set it to cut on at. And these type of pumps setups, normally we cut them on at about 40 pounds and then they shut off at about 60 to 70. And if the tank is too small, and you're using constant volume out of a hose, what will happen is the pump is going to pump more water than what you can run out of, of one garden hose or even two garden hose sprinklers at, you know, at a time. This size pump will. So the extra water that's not being used by the owner will fill up into here, pressurize to, and cut off. Then it's going to drain down because if you're still constantly using water until it cuts back on. So if the tank is too small, that time, that's called cycle time between when it cuts off the pump to when it drains down and cuts on. So a smaller tank is going to cut off and it would drain down real fast. And you don't want your pump to cut on and off very frequently between, okay, that's called cycle time. So this is the minimum size required for a one horsepower submersible pump, 25 gallon per minute depending on what the usage is and what the customer is doing with the application uh, we, we can go bigger um, if you're going to have a lot of you know garden hose usage or multiple houses on one well and then you want a larger tank you know for every time you flush a toilet or wash your hands while the dishwasher is running you know it will fill up cut off cut on so for agricultural use like this here this will be fine for what we're doing on this application developing the well as I showed you when we started that procedure I'm comfortable with the well producing water comfortable seeing that the screens are holding back the sand everything that we want um, it's still a little dirty so not completely clear yet so what I'm gonna do now is pull the drill rods out and we're gonna break down the rig so we can get this stuff cleaned up and and start moving forward get it out of the way and after we get the rig boomed down, we'll put an airline back in it and we'll finish developing it. So give it a little time right now for that sand to settle in. Sometimes you have to 
stop the development, let it settle, give it some time, then go back and add it some more and you'll get it to finish clearing up. And also that's going to help us save time to get this thing wrapped up and finished today. So while it's developing the last little bit, we can be cleaning up the job site. So, but you never want to break down the rig or your drilling equipment or move off of the well that you're installing, whether it's by hand or with a drilling rig, whatever you're trying to do. You always want to make sure that it's making water before you break down the equipment or, or don't just assume that it's going to work. You have to test it. Whether you hook a pump up to it, if it's a shallow well doing it yourself or an airlift procedure development like we were doing here so as of right now we're gonna get this stuff packed up and I'll see you back in a little bit when we finalize the development process and we'll show you the final product as far as the water and the, the clarity of it coming out of the ground and then I'll show you the pump install after that these up put them into here I'll bring you the wrenches in a second I'm gonna bust a piece of pipe off of that and yeah we'll get ready to drop that pump in just a second I need is the well seal. I really hope we got it. It's not in this truck. So there is a submerged pump there. There is the. This is called a bladder tank, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Bladder tank or pressure tank? A pressure tank, yeah. Okay, guys. We got done with our grouting, got the equipment out of here. We've got a 14 foot static water level here on this well. So we are about to lower our submersible pump down and then we will plumb our pressure tank, pressure switch, you know, all our, we're doing a pressure switch and pressure tank on this one like I explained earlier. Some people, if they're doing this only for irrigation systems, they can use a pump start relay to control your pump. You also can use a VFD, which is a variable frequency drive, which is a constant pressure system. Those are nice, especially if you have a larger home, lots of fixtures, lots of bathrooms, or if you're doing a lot of irrigating with garden hoses for long periods of time throughout the day or if you have an irrigation system that may have 
only two or three heads on one zone and five or six on one and eight or ten on another or lots of drip lines something where it's very uneven amounts of usage because the pump will not cut on and off which is cycling like i said earlier when it, explaining the size of the pressure tank um, so a vfd can be very useful they're nice for certain applications uh, this is old school technology bladder tanks orifice tanks have been around forever when talking about wells and pumps so that's what we're setting up here so we're going to lower the pump in and get this hooked up and finalized so we can get out of here thank you There's our water table. So now the pump's going below the water for another uh, 30 foot or so. All right, Cammy. which side do you want your bladder tank on? That blue tank needs to set our discharge valve facing. I'll let you call the shot. You're the pro. I think if we do this way, then your hand pump's going to be facing out this way. I think since yeah. you're pouring water, so it sloped that way. I mean, the water right. runoff. Hopefully you don't waste water. Hopefully we're not going to waste water. It's long term. Yep. So, but anyways, you call the shot. You're the pro here. Yes, ma'am. Our valve assembly. Tricky in the box too, though. Okay. Monk, two monkey wrenches. So this is an ABS well seal, not steel. These plastic ones, they don't rust like the steel ones do, so they tend to last longer. We use Schedule 80 drop pipe, so it's threaded drop pipe because of what we're doing by adding in a hand pump. We wanted this to all be threaded. It's also more, more sturdy. I need um, the gray uh, threaded nipple out of the tool bag or out the top box where you're at. The one that goes out the tank. Down, that will clear, except we have an electrical conduit there. mock up need the hand pump to mock up this it's in the box sitting on that table over there next to the back of the compressor This is our Simmons pitcher pump. I need to get some water to hydrate this. Um, 
little bucket or cooler or something. So if we have this facing this way, ladder thing there, you'll have plenty of room for the handle, output, isolation valve. You have plenty of room to operate that. Okay, I like that. That'll be good. So our electrical will be fine there. So you always want to try and envision everything you're putting together before getting everything tightened down and secured. That way you don't have to take things apart and make more work for yourself. This well seal will expand a rubber grommet between the inside of our four inch casing and the outside of our inch and a quarter drop pipe, holding it firm. So it's a sanitary well seal. So we're gonna keep anything from getting down into the well. Uh, we got two monkey wrenches. Come on. Yep. All right. Let's go ahead and get that other assembly pipe doped up. We'll put it on this side of the T. Then we need our jet nipple pipe doped up and out coming out of that valve. This one's going on to there. Yep. Pipe doped that up. Just set those well tags in that box. We'll do that again. <coughs> good amount on there galvanize on galvanize you want to use plenty of thread compound even more so than PVC to metal PVC to PVC see better got any metal thread on a metal thread make sure you've got plenty of thread compound Thread that into there, Jake. I just have to close your handle, so uh, that. Hold on, hold on. So I designed this one to where we will be able to go down. It has to clear that casing and then upwards. This one will actually. This one will be over here once it's tight. So let's not worry about that. Let's get a wrench set for this T. Show one for the T, show one for that valve. There we go. Can you tighten that? Tighten that? Yeah, sure. They use right there. Yeah, this valve to open upwards. that will finalize. Cammy, I'm trying to keep you in mind with how I place these handles and everything. Thank you. I wish not to open that. Thank you. 
a good amount of force on yours, Draco, to hold it steady while he goes in the car. Now this one down here. Yeah, I'm gonna get this. Let's get back on this. This one? It's okay. Good. It's good. It's gotta be. This should be right different. here. Mm -hmm. okay. Good. May just put it on the brass ball valve so they don't over tighten. They're not in, it doesn't take many threads. And I actually returned two of these nipples at the supply house because they had imperfections in the threads and I tested all of them. You always have to make sure your fittings, when you're buying them, they get dropped in, in the factories, they can get nicked. Look good for my house. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. We want everything nice and square. I think that will do it. That will be our on and off when needed to use the pitcher pump. And this will need to only be turned if the power is off. This is a very specific type of setup you never want a valve shut off valve between your motor and pump which is down in this well and your bladder tank and pressure switch because if someone comes over here and turns this it will burn the pump up it won't shut off it will deadhead and keep running even if the pressure switch was on this side of the valve it would cause it to just cycle so this is only for an out of power emergency situation in which the owner and operator will be aware and familiar with how to use this when needed. You gonna tighten this up? Yeah. I tightened it. You paused it on the ground. Yeah, I'll do it again. Let's just see if it turns freely. All right. So I got a question that just popped into mind. So say, you know, you still got power, you got the electrical running to your pump, and you decided you wanted to use the pitcher pump, could you still use the pitcher pump at the same time? No, you will have to cut the power off to the submersible motor and submersible pump in order to use your hand pump. Okay. All right. Now, it would work. Even if this was on, going to your system, your pressure tank was charged, and 
uh, but you would have to close this even if the power was on you could do that and then open this one but if you do not close this valve and you open this one you're going to get 60 pounds of pressure from your bladder tank pushing up and blow out your hand pump and you don't want to do that um this is just one way of hooking up a hand pump and a well pump together we also use these to test pumps a lot of times when if a pump is not pumping water we'll uh, temporarily install one on it to confirm that the well is making water that we're able to pull water through the check valve or foot valve from a well and if that works, then we know that's the pump is not working. Because um, you get there and one won't work on a service call, you don't know if it's a problem in the well or if it's a problem with the pump. But if you can put a hand pump on and pull water from the well, then you know all the, the uh, supply line and supply piping from the well to the pump is working sufficiently. And you can diagnose and narrow down some things. Get that tank, Jacob. Turn this corner. Get this valve back straight. Turn this valve down a little bit. This thread compound is definitely messy. Some people like to use Teflon tape. You can do that. I used to always use it for the clean aspect of things but the liquid Teflon in my opinion gives you a much better seal All right, let's set this up on here and mock up our blocks got it all right can we get a, sh a shovel shovel You to hold this block like hold this like this. Don't let it slip. Don't push too far. Normally, I would use and recommend using a plastic pad to set these tanks on if they're in an outside application and not inside of a garage or something but they have been out of them at our supply house for a few weeks now so cinder blocks especially if you're in a lot of mud or you're going to do any grading after the fact if it's a new construction property this bladder tank can always be easily removed if you're going to increase your grade or decrease your grade around the well and it's a piece of inch and a quarter pipe out of the back of the truck there's a piece what Connor's putting on now these are our well identification plates has all our specifications for the well, depth, volume yield, the date of install, depth of pump, the depth of the screens, the water level, identification information, everything for a future service provider needs or for ourselves to come back and we don't specifically remember what we did at a certain location as far as county and state regulations. 
if this was a potable well those would have to be on there this is an agricultural well which agricultural irrigation wells here do not have to be permitted we, we still go ahead and put in those that information has to be there either way what you need piece of inch and quarter pipe where's that at in the bed of the drill Pressure gauge. 